what area what area privilege and uh, so I, I'm not taking this for granted. Um, thank you so very much. Inka is my name. Inka, I know. Um, so today we'll be looking at your first 30 days on a BA assignment. So I've prepared a few slides and which I'll walk through very quickly and we'll leave enough room for questions. Um, yeah, so let's Sorry. that. Can you hear me okay? Yes, this is Esther, okay. the um, auto facilitator. Just to cut in, sorry about that. Um, okay. So if anyone has any questions after, um, while he's um, discussing about his slides, just raise, um, put your hands up, just raise your hands and we will um, unmute you. Okay, thanks. Thanks for that, Esther. So I'll share my screen. Um, is not the most aesthetically appealing, I must say. Right, okay, so, but before we do the, um, how many people do we have on the call just yet? Can I see about 52? We have 67 participants right 60, now. 67. Yeah. So, is it fair to assume that we are aspiring BAs or BAs already? If you're an aspiring BA, uh, could you show with a raise of a finger or something? Okay. 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 There, there are a few. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Is anyone based outside of United Kingdom? Anyone based outside? Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Right, okay, so let me let me wish through them. Um yes. As mentioned earlier, please feel free to interject. Just raise up with a show of a hand and you'll have the floor and you can ask any question. Okay, um, I'll, I'll much rather have it that way than talk all through and, you know. So by all means, uh, if I say anything you're not clear about, I'll just interject with a raise of a hand. Right, okay, so um, Yinka is my name. A bit of background. Um, so I called out through a company called Blue Tech Consulting, which I registered about eight years ago. Um, up until about a few years ago, I used to train actually. I used to train BAs, Scrum Masters. Um, you know, uh, I had. I had batches of, uh, I think at any one point in time, I would have like six, seven um, mentees or trainees that I would. And I mean, I'm proud to say that as of today, there are few, I can count about 20 people um, that I could say, okay, uh, we crossed paths and they are in, even some have become delivery managers and all that. Let me stress this, that is no advertisement. It's just for the record. I don't do training anymore. Okay, so um, I thought I should say that. So um, Alpha Consulting Services, have, oops. Oh, okay, ignore that one. Husband of one wife, I have two daughters. I live in Northfleet, Gravesend. I'm passionate about technology, user experience and design. I'd always liked so in terms of academic background, I have a first and second degree in computer science. So that gives me a very solid technical grounding. Um, is it super relevant in everyday life? I wouldn't say so, but um, 
is always ever handy. You know, I understand tech well. Uh, when I started my career straight out of uni, so many decades ago, don't ask me, um, I was doing COBOL, Unix development and all that. I did a lot of Oracle SQL, but I knew I wasn't cut out to be a developer. I just did enough to keep my job. And I wanted something else, which I didn't know, you know, way back in Nigeria then. Uh, I just knew I wasn't a tech person. I liked the notion of, you know, speaking to customers, you know, solving problems, you know, doing workshops and things like that. But I didn't quite know what role would fulfill that. Then came along the notion of systems analysis uh, way back then, uh, UML and all those fancy stuff. And it really appealed to me. Um, I'm a solution architecture -y kind of a thing. And at least I wasn't coding. So I did a lot of use cases and, you know, UML diagrams and all that until about 2004, I left Nigeria for UK to come do a master's and the rest is history. So somebody told me about business analysis and I was like, okay, let's have a go. And that was it. Uh, it, it just dawned on me that this was what I had always looked out for. But because I didn't know what it was, I couldn't express or articulate exactly what I was looking for. So I'd always like the notion of, I don't want to leave tech, you know? I'm no tech person, but then I don't want to leave tech. I like the notion of market, competition, customer experience, design, user experience or user research. And if you now fuse all of that together, the intersection, that's a sweet spot. That's product, product development, BA, product ownership. That always gets me excited. And that is what I've done um, in the last couple of years. So that's me. Now, ground rules and disclaimer. There is no set way of doing things. And I dare stress that, I think if I count, I would have been on maybe 10, 15 different projects over the last 10 years, different companies as well. Uh, because when I started contracting, I was getting fired a lot. That's a story for another day. You know, I could spend two months and I will get fired, you know. But each time I got fired, I learned something and I took it to the next role. I think I can confidently say that there are no two positions that have been exactly the same. So to that extent, I uh, do not want anyone, because I'm not projecting this as a rule or casting stone, so you shouldn't see it as such. It might be way different with somebody else. Uh, but I do say that the end justifies the means. Uh, we could achieve the same thing in different ways, you know, as with writing requirements. You know, I've, I've worked with managers that wanted me to write requirements in a certain way. And it, it could be a struggle because no two, no two people can tell the same story exactly the same way, using the same vocabulary, the same words. It will be different. But at the end of the day, it might, the outcome might be the same. Even in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and all that, you know, they told the same story differently about one person. And you can see how 
the differences and the personalities played out in each of the in each of the gospels. Sorry to digress, but I, I, I hope you get the point. So the submissions are strictly based on my personal experience. Uh, yours may be different. Is in no particular order. Uh, thirdly, your peculiar circumstance has a huge part to play in how, sorry about the typo, in the grand scheme of things. So uh, what I mean by that is um, how experienced are you to start with? If you're a newbie, sorry, I need to break this bad news to you. Um, but that should not put you off. You will screw things up. If you're lucky, you don't get found out. Okay, if you're unlucky, you get found out. But if you are lucky, the finding out of what you screwed up is not as consequential. Those are the nuances. Let's, let's, let's just say it the way it is. Um, and lastly, feel free to jump in, challenge me, push back, disagree, object. And of course, ask questions. So if you have any questions, if you need me to repeat or clarify, just put up a hand and I'll stop and address the question if I can. Are we all good still? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Right, so now, why, why do we even need BAs? BAs are change agents, right? And only constant thing in life is change. And there are so many drivers of change in the marketplace, in companies, in, and so on and so forth. It doesn't matter what kind of company it is. And hmm, if you look through my list, there's a slight bias towards technology. Yeah, there's a slight bias. Now, there could be operational changes as well. Um, I think I, which I didn't enjoy. I worked on a project where they had to move facilities from one place to the other. And I was hired as a BA on that project. Um, sorry, you won't see it on my CV because it doesn't add up to what I like to project. Um, so it was more of operational than system tech thing so so don't think or don't assume that change or the need for a ba is only relevant in a techie design development kind of context you could have human resource uh change you could there could be a need to to move equipment and machines and or you know, facilities or even build and manufacturing. Um, and even in pharmaceutical and any form of industry for that matter. Uh, but there's a very, very good chance that once you land a job as a BA, the changes or the driver of those changes will be any of this. So you're either existing enhancing existing capabilities, okay? I remember when I joined Barclays Bank years ago, um, Barclays Mobile Bank was just about six months. I remember then they had just about a million customers then. I think it was getting to, to a year or thereabout. As of the time I left, they've garnered about 5 million customers. As of today, I think it's in excess of 12 million customers that use Barclays Mobile Bank, banking app. So it was very not mature. There were lots of things you couldn't do. And I was part of that team for about two years that kind of matured the product. Um, you know, things like standing order, stop a check, and all those things were, you know, added to the, to the platform over a period of time. So you could be enhancing existing capabilities, adding new features, 
Uh, it could be launching a new product or a new capability. It may have to do with migration. Sorry, just one sec. It may have to do with migration um, or integration or replatforming or regulatory changes or building resilience or system upgrade. You name it, it could be any of this. Um, so replatforming could involve, you know, maybe you migrate into a different CRM. It could be from on-premise to, to cloud. Um, just, just about anything, you know. So, and if you look through this list, there's a good chance a company would need to do this at some point in time, you know depending on how old the company is, the market they serve, the customer they serve. In financial services, which have been for the last 10 years or thereabout, up until January this year, um, is fast paced. The competition is fierce. Um, time to market is critical, you know. If you're a backlist, you're watching your back on what HSBC is doing or what, Lois Banking is doing and all that because it's the same customer base and we just try to steal customers from each other by presenting something to make life easier for them. So it's fierce and, and as such is dynamic, it's fast paced. So any one of these or a combination of these would be at play at any one time. Okay, moving on. Now, so we're looking at the first 30 days, right? Now, I'll go to the number seven. This is what I've started doing more now. I didn't used to think of it, but this has really served me well. Now, what is this? Prepare a term of reference and review with your manager. Now, so I walk in through the door, I get introduced to my team. Um, on day one, uh, Yinka, Amidia, Yadi, and all that. Okay, by the, by the first week, by the Friday, I would come up with this. So I'm a product owner BA. When I did an interview, there will be a job spec, but it's usually different in terms of expectation when you're on a live project. And okay, let me put the caveat. It may be a bit tricky for somebody coming in newly, but by the first week, I would have known enough to draw a list of what I perceive to be the expectation on me in terms of what I'm accountable for, what I'm responsible for. So I'll make that list and I'll share with my manager or my PM or whoever I report to from task management standpoint. And I'll say, oh, excuse me, Mr. Manager, can you have a look at this and tell me if I've missed out anything? Or if I've overreached? Yeah, take your time, have a look. That really helps because um, as you would, I've been on projects where they said they wanted to do, maybe during the interview, X, Y, Z, but you get on the project, and a month down the line, somebody is whinging about you not doing ABC. It was never agreed that you'd be doing ABC. So this helps you. And I'm not suggesting that this should be cast in stone, but this gives you a negotiating platform. Okay. I've done up a list, I've reviewed it with you. You did say I should add one or two things I've added. 
So I have a scope, you know, of my expectations. So the onus is on me to deliver on that basis. So any other person can challenge me or could say, you've not done this or that or that or otherwise. Or if some random person comes up and says, oh, Yinka has not delivered a target operating model. I'll be like, okay, so um, yeah, I can do it, but here's the list. And I review this with so and so and so, and I've delivered on this basis. I can show you one, two, three, four, five. Target operating model, if you're asking me to do it, yes, I will, on top of what I already do. But you can't randomly from nowhere just judge me on that basis because it was never part of the deal. So I do this, I think by the end of the first, second week, I like to do this. And, you know, just put it before whoever I'm reporting to. And it's like a contract, everybody's hands are tied. So you can't say, oh, Yinka didn't do so and so and so. Yeah, I have a term of reference. Okay, so usually it's my, about my first. Okay, let's now go back to, to my approach in no particular order, or even before we go get there. So um, considerations, I think this can, to a very large extent, impact on the direction you go. And I'll explain. If you come in as a permanent staff, um, I think in my career so far, I was the permanent staff three times. Yeah. Um, and depending on the level you come in at, you have the luxury. You could, your first month, you might still be doing induction. You know, so the, the companies have invested so much in you, the interview process, and, you know, you are now their property, I mean, subject to passing your probation, um, by the way. Uh, but they've invested in you. You've probably gone through three, four stages of interview. Uh, so they've spent money. So they want you to succeed. So you are hardly in a rush. Uh, first month, you might still be doing induction. So they will ease you gently into the system. Right, okay. So if you're unfortunate, no, I would rather. If you are not as lucky and your first job was a contract job, as was my case, um, I lasted two weeks in my first contract job, two weeks. Um, yeah, because I, I went through training, but it's different in real life. So for the most part, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so that can inform your approach um, to a degree, because if you come in as a contract on day one, they're expecting a lot because your, your offer was precedent on the fact that you've done it before and you've done it for maybe several years and they're expecting you to come in as a consultant. So they believe you know what you're doing. Also, uh, the project phase, where, where you are or where you come into the project, where the project was at, to a degree can influence what you go after. If you came in when they were still, you know, putting a business case together, looking at the markets, looking at the opportunity, defining the problem, hypotheses and all that, that's very early on in the process, which is my preference really, uh, because you get to uh, know a lot more you get to understand the context of the problem they're solving, who are they solving it for, and so on and so forth. Um, if you came in much further into the process, 
um, you're almost doing BAU and, and all that. So those are considerations. If you came in as a contractor or a PAMI or and whatever phase you join the project at can influence the ask of you. Okay, so here's my approach. Uh, you come in, um, you want to meet your team. If it's a, an agile managed environment, you probably fit into a squad. And hmm, it could vary in shape, architecture, and size. Uh, I've been with Scrum Squad that is about 20 people, and I've been with one that is about seven and nine. So you want to meet them. Um, hopefully they will have a backlog. Uh, they'll have some things documented already, um, but that is not always the case. Um, it might just be a newly, you know, a pilot or a newly put together team for a particular initiative and all that. So you want to meet them, your scrum master, your BAs from other work streams, if it's a mature project or program or environment you're working in, they could be valuable as well. Your product owner, your project manager, some, some companies to do project manager, scrum master. You know, um, what can we do about that? And so on and so forth. So your developers, your testers, I say that, mm, Usually my best friend on any team as a BA is my tester because they, they usually know the systems and the scenarios uh, very well. So it served me really well. So meet the immediate team. Any questions so far? Any questions? Yeah, hiya. Thank you very much for doing this one for us. Okay. Um, I think when when I'm half problem, I'll be, I'll be touching down graves in. I'm good. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> right. So would you say your own word? Because I have got a few friends that are actually BA. And a few of them were telling me I should start as a junior BA. As a junior BA, so they won't require much like hands down and then you can easily integrate into the role easily that way you'll be able to in fact i'll be able to learn few things or unlearn few things instead of being a contract being a contractor although i've been a contractor for compliance for many years if that makes sense in the financial sector so obviously i know with ba is different to compliance if that makes sense so mm -hmm. what you say because you said you've been fired a lot and that just giving a kind of cold water to my chest, kind of like, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, so don't let that, because my experience will be different from yours. So don't let my, my misfortune, don't let it dampen your spirit in any way, shape or form, we're different. And let me also give an example. When I used to train people, there were, people, there were some of the mentees that on day one, they start applying, they get an interview, first interview, they get the job. Within a month. Some would take six months with so many interviews. It took me, it was on my third interview, I got an offer as a BA. And I lasted two weeks. It's part of the process. Okay, yours will not, may not be like that. Back to the question, junior BA, senior BA, lead BA. It means very little, I tell you. So they might say a junior BA in company XYZ, but it will amaze you what they'll be demanding of you as a junior BA. Whereas in some other company, a junior BA, is 
in every true sense a junior BA. I've been a lead BA before, hmm? and the only person I was leading was myself. So all these things mean nothing. I, I remember I wrote something on LinkedIn um, months ago that the, the, the essence of the gist was that don't be put off by all these titles. Oh, we need a technical BA. That will put some other people off. But you get on the project and you find out that the most technical thing you've got to do is to draw a use case. So all these things vary, you know, BA, I mean, 20 years ago, I'm not sure there was anything called BA. So is is new, is evolved, and everybody is just, you know, defining it as they go along based on their context. So if you want it, just go for it. Junior, junior might mean nothing in a context. It might mean something in another context. I don't know if that answers your question. Um, Dave, okay. Uh, Dave has his hands up next. Hi, Dave. Hi, uh, quick question. On the terms of reference, what if yeah. um, your, your manager comes back and says any other duty that may be deemed necessary? Because um, I do see that in, um, you know, offer letters or, or so. Yeah. So how do you navigate that? Because that's wide, that can be broad as well. Indeed, yes. So, but at least you've covered the ones that are the most haves, right? So somebody would have to define what any that is deemed necessary to me as we, as we go along. Okay, a case in point was at my last role, um, as a product manager, product owner, and the CTO called me and said, oh, Yinka, you can, can you help us produce an API contract? I laughed and I said, ah, so <laughs> am I a solutions architect now? Do you know what he said? He said, but you put it on your CV. I said, yes, and we joked about it. And I said, yeah, I can do it, okay? But that is not part of, so is this something extra additional you're asking me to do? I said, if I have the chance, I should do it. And I did it. So I, I guess the point is that it's okay for them to add that, but at least you have a term of reference that somebody is visible of and kind of assents to it, if not formally, but at least verbally. Oh, Dave is my manager. I've put it before him to say, okay, this is what I feel I'm accountable for. This is what I feel I'm responsible for. What do you think? Yeah, Dave says, oh, that, that's about right. Uh, if you can do this, yeah. Uh, but be mindful that, you know, testing can come up. We might need you to help. Oh, yeah, yeah, why not? So to a degree, you've covered your back. And if push comes to shove, of course, uh, if, if you have the capacity, yeah, why not? Um, there are two questions in the chat box. The first one, sorry, the first one is, is the best time to join a project at initial stage so you can get the whole picture and capture the business case? I don't think there's a best time because uh, the best time would be, would be, would be any time. I think it's more of you adding value whether it's beginning or middle or the end, because that is that is so out of your hand and out of your control. You you really don't know. You submit a CV, they interview you. You know you're not looking out for a role that is going to be in the beginning, are you? 
Yes, it's advantageous because you get to, I mean, it's like you, you want to build a house and you're right there when they were digging the trenches for the foundation, you know? So that is, that would always be an ideal. That's my preference too, but hardly is the case. So if you have it, yeah, that lucky you. It gives you a broad context. You know, you interact with a lot more um, because in discovery, what you're doing is you are diverging, you know, that way. You're going that way because you are testing a lot of hypotheses. You are understanding your customer. You are, you know, you're trying to form a problem statement. So there's a lot of um, stakeholders involved within the organization. And once that is over, then you start, okay, we've tested this, we've validated it, then you start converging. Then at some point, prototyping, sprinting and all that, when is a bit more stable. Does that answer the question? Thank you for answering that question. That question okay. was from Amy. Okay. Right. Is there any other one? Yeah, TOR is a powerful tool to ensure there's clarity of purpose and alignment. If I did that sooner, I probably would have kept some of the jobs I, I lost you know, in the past, but we'll learn every day. So meet your team, then know your stakeholders. Of course, they are so, depending on the kind of project, in financial services, I go back to that. Oh man, mm, there's some documents. You might find about 50, although most of them will be FYI. But half of those 50 might need signing off. Voice of customer, compliance, legal, finance, um, infosec, fraud, um, network operations, branch network, telephony, yadi, yadi, yadi. So many of them. SME means um, subject matter experts. Thank you. Anyway. It just means so it just means somebody who is a specialist in a particular product. Say in, somebody in mortgages um, who knows mortgage products, the business rules, the customers, the market. You know, you again you could have BAs aligned to such kind of products as well, who have been doing they probably started off as ops, you know, maybe sales ops in mortgages. And they did that for 10 years or 20 years. So there's no mortgages inside out. And somehow there's an opening within the organization for a BA. They came in and they just become specialist BAs. Right, so governance, regulatory platforms, there are so many people you need to know. So um, let's move on. Yeah, so um, then you've got to find answers to the four W plus H. What, why, when, how, who. Uh, most of the time you can find these answers in some, okay, let me, let me, let me show you something that speaks to that. Uh, so, okay, I obscured it out. I'm not giving any brand name away. Okay, so look at this, the relationship between the button and da da da, the fix, oh, this is a fix. Customer benefit, key risk. Okay, let me use. Let me use this. Oops. 
this. So this is a what feature overview. Loan top of functionality extends the yadi yadi yadi. After selecting that, this is then and so on. This functionality would also present an opportunity for customers to continue. So that's the what. This is part of the what as well. Introduce so and so and so. That's the scope. Um, those are the business rules. I think embedded in this somehow is the why as well. So the problem we're trying to solve and how we, what are those things we are bringing about to either solving that problem or remediating any gap or providing some, some form of benefit. Okay, let me go back to, to where I was, yeah. So usually you'll find that in, in some document or some shared area, um, I've been on projects where it, were all, it was all scattered in emails and SharePoint documents. And the first thing I did was to pull all of that together and do something, I use, um, Oh, I didn't have it here. It's a value, value proposition canvas where you have certain sections that speaks to the what, why, when, how, and who. You know, just something that brings everything together. And it could give you a very quick win, you know, that's our low hanging fruits. Um, so, the what, what problem are we solving? What is the opportunity? What does the current look like? What does success look like? What are the benefits? What if we do nothing? So where you may likely find this information is as below. Again, different companies. Um, see, okay, so here's what I wanted to say. Different companies, different teams communicate the what, why, who, when, how, because those are the key things, okay? They communicate it through different artifacts. So if you are in HMRC today, they may call it PID. If you are in HSBC tomorrow, same thing could be called a business brief or a business case, as the case may be, or, if I, or a business requirement document. Okay, I don't care what anybody calls it, so long as it speaks to the who, the what, the why, the when, the how. That's a critical thing. So uh, if you're not getting answers to that, you better go find it because um, in fact, you might understand the what, if you don't know the why, your knowledge is still, there's still a gap. Okay, take for instance, I say, go get me a car. You understand that? Okay, what kind of car? Um, whatever it is, what color, this, you got all that requirement, okay? But you didn't understand the why. What happens? They may go ahead, start building the car, only for you to realize that that car was meant to be fairing a physically challenged person from point A to B. Yes, you've gathered requirements about a car, but it's not even close to being adequate to solving the problem. 
So the what is as critical as the why. Why are we doing? And you, again, as you, it doesn't come in one day, as you get more experience, you get more confident because confidence is key. You know, there are some things you can pull off or even call a bluff off because you have the confidence. You know, I've been told, oh, Inka, can you create an epic? Calm down. Don't just throw an epic at me. What are we trying to do? Why are we doing it? Uh, we need to, we need to create an API. Can we start? No, no, hold on. I, I get you, but let, let's understand what, what problem are we trying to solve? Why are we solving it? Because you may not need an API after all. So that gives you a 360 view of what we solving, why we solving it, who we solving it for. So those are the first things you want to go after in a project. Ideally by your first week, second week, especially if you're a contractor. Why are we doing this? Why have we not done this sooner? Or have we done anything in the past that, you know, in this direction? If we've done, what did we do? And how, what was the outcome? Again, you'll find most of these answers in business cases, business requirement documents and all that. Uh, when, when has to do with delivery plan, roadmap, project plan. If I think the, the closer to the project you are to the inception, the less likely you will have a detailed plan. But as the discovery process is over, then they move into alpha and they begin to set things. Then the roadmap, the delivery begin to evolve um, over, over a period of time. But at least they could have a version zero at the very least. Who, oh, of course, um, yeah, the stakeholders. So moving on. Any questions? Oh. Yes, we do Chibuzo. have questions Chibuzo. in the uh, okay. box and then Chibuzo's hands are up. Which one do you want to take first, please? Anyone, it doesn't matter. Uh, let's go for Chibuzo first. Chibuzo, can you unmute yourself? I've asked you to unmute. Um, I think he's having problem with me too. Okay, he's got it. Hello. 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 Hi. Good evening. Good evening, Yinka. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hi. So, yes, my question is on these um, artifacts that you listed here, the business brief, business yeah. case, and the rest of them, yeah? Are there different documents that needs to be, um, that needs to, that are there different deliverables that a BA is expected to, you know, um, provide during the first stage or the initiation, the project initiation, or can these um, different Ws be provided in any of them, depending on the organization? Yeah, I think you've answered the question, really. Um, I've not been to two places where they use the same nomenclature or the same name. Um, most of the time, okay, let me say in my experience, uh, I would say, I've only just done a business case, maybe once or twice. Um, again, depending on the organization, the way it's set up. If you, I think the smaller the organization, like startups, the more that may be expected of you, you could become jack of all trades because maybe there are just 20 of you in an open office. 
and the CTO is sitting across. But if you're working on HSBC or a Barclays, where is hierarchical to a degree, and you have so many layers of, you know, and so there's a, I remember vividly well, uh, Barclay days, the proposition manager is different from the product manager. Then much later, we had another layer of a product owner and the delivery manager. So anything business case was done by proposition manager. Um, for instance, this was done by, if you look at this, my name will still be there. Job, uh, I used to work with one Rob Jeffers. Okay, I think it was proposition manager, uh, now product manager. So it will put this brief together and the brief would have to speak to was the summary, what are the high level use cases, was the customer benefit, was the risk, was the commercial benefit, feasibility, and all that. And that was it. So this we could go with to um, we used to call it DAG, digital access governance. So they are subjected to some scrutiny and they score it out of 20. If it doesn't score above 12, it may not get the funding. If it score below 10, it's dead on arrival. Nobody is touching it. You know, so it varies considerably. Um, it may fall on your laps, but you may be very far from it, as had been my case um, in my experience. So um, there was one of my trainees uh, about a couple of years ago. And, you know, when she got a job and she's like, and she will run some things past me. And I'll be like, wow, I've had like almost 10 years and I've never done this, you know? So it's really not cast in stone, but going into BA, you just want to know as much as you can and um, see what the opportunity throws at you. Uh, some organizations, a BA is like, almost like a glorified secretary. Anything they throw at you, uh, depending on how the team is set up and how they've handled the BA practice uh, prior to you joining. Yeah, so that's the best thanks I can give, I'm afraid. Okay, we have um, a request from C. A. K. It's, he's asking, please, can you expand your screen, Inka? Expand the screen, okay. Okay, so that's that. Um, there's also a, mess a message, a question, basically, from, thank you, from ID, saying, does store really work in Nigeria? Sometimes your line manager might want, might just allow you to do more uh, than required because you are available or have shown interest. Some line managers might not be approachable. How do you deal with this situation? I think you've answered that if I'm right. Um, so the context is different. I remember because I used to work in Intercontinental Bank um, up until 2004. I remember then we had our contractual closing hours, which was, I mean, it was eight to four. But so long as my head of IT was still on his seat, you dare not go home. So if he's there till 10, we had to hang around. That's the standard. You are lucky to even have a job to start with. So uh, why are you rushing home anyway? To rush home and come back to the office the following day and <laughs> not having a job, you know? So it's different. The nuances is um, HR policies, standards. No, we can't compare the two. So you would have to 
give Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And if your context or your geographics um, calls for all of those things, you know, I mean, if you get fired, I don't know how much recourse you can have back home. Maybe things have changed now. But how do you establish abuse or something? You know, oh, fashion shiny now. You don't want to walk happy. So it's different. So you got to just respond to the imperatives of your geography, I suppose, and the culture. I know my limits here. And you know, you have the backing of HR and legislation. You know, in my team, our managers will say, I don't want you walking be beyond this. Guys, no weekend walk. It's a, it's a different culture. Can we move on? Or is there any other question? Yes, there is, I'm afraid. Who creates the roadmap? This is from ADT. Uh, roadmap, usually the product manager, product owner. Okay. Uh, this is a sample roadmap. Uh, this is a sample. Um, I don't know why this is hanging. This is another form of a roadmap. 2016 quarter four, yadi yadi yadi. And these are uh, what the company is hoping to land. And of course, uh, one more stress that is a living document, uh, as you might expect. And depending again on the size of the company, all of this might be different work streams. And if they all share the same platform and technology stack, there's a there's usually that need for serious collaboration and syncing so that they can figure out dependencies. Okay, so for us to learn this, we need this. For us to learn this, we need this. So this has to come before that and so on and so forth. That's the job of a delivery manager. Um, and so on, and that's some of the things they do in PI planning. Um, so long story short, that rests squarely with the product owner or the product manager by the books. You could get somewhere tomorrow and a project manager is doing this. Don't quote me because I've seen all manner of things. Uh, and I've come to a conclusion that so long as we achieve the goal, it doesn't matter how we got there. Yeah, it should matter, but what can you do? We got there in some uh, organized format and way. Where I work now, there's no notion of a um, Scrum Master. I was stunned because nothing is a Scrum Squad. Scrum Master is one of the most critical, but the Scrum Master job function is shared between me and the rest of the team. So there's no Scrum Master. I manage the Jira, I manage all of that, you know, alongside with product ownership and writing stories. Any other questions? One more, just one more. Um, I don't know who sent this because your phone is saying it's an iPhone. So please could you let go or change your name? The question is, 
isn't this like implementing five wise techniques to understand define business needs um i think it's to understand and define business needs i think that he was this person is referring to the four w's and one h in a sense yeah that's correct because what what are you trying to unravel with now i get the the is it four whys or five whys so if you ask the question if you ask a question four times if you ask why 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 you get to the root of the problem sorry sorry so if you if you okay um i i got late to the office why because my car broke down why did it break down because um i didn't service it why did you not service it because i don't keep records of what i need to do okay so that means the problem we should be tackling is not the car but providing you with a calendar so that you can keep a tab on your task list so that you don't forget to service your car that's it that's the core of the problem so that, that's four wise or whatever um four w plus h is is much more holistic right what problem are we solving? Why are we solving it? Who are we solving it for? When are we solving it? And how? I, I hope that answers your question. Now, number four is understanding the technology stack. Um, I found this useful as well. Uh, it may be far-fetched for first 30 days. But if you keep it in view, then you, the thing is, uh, what's that law again? The law that says that if you think a job or a piece of work will take you a whole day, it probably will. But if you think it will take you two hours, there's a good chance you might complete it in two hours. I've forgotten the exact word in spell, something like that. So technology stack simply means, uh, example, um, where I work now, uh, they have so many systems. In fact, one of the, the, the program I'm on now is trying to integrate all of those systems and where it will be too expensive, we create a data backbone uh, so instead of using spreadsheets and all that and using third party to upload and download, we just create like a, a boss where everybody fits into, kind of. So you, you just get got to know exology, um, intellometry, Salesforce, and all of those things, and the information that resides in them, and the use cases those platforms are used in fulfilling. It just helps you with better understanding. And it helps you to even know who you should be speaking to in terms of the stakeholders. Now, you would hardly find this in most companies. Um, I remember when I was at DNG, I had to because when I joined, I really suffered because um there are so many systems and people will throw it at you you know almost assuming you've been in the company as long as they have been oh what's wrong with genu what's genu calm down now what's genu okay genu is the claims platform what's scheme scheme is where we create the policies uh was a uh, web sphere that's the pricing engine and all those little little things and now they 
connect. So the quicker you can have visibility of them, the better, the more informed and the more, again, confidence is, is critical. The more you know, the more confident you become. And the more confident you are, the better you can engage and speak up when you have to. Uh, it was last week, um, we had this meeting, very high senior stakeholders. And they were bringing, somebody was proposing, you know, guys, that is far-fetched. It makes zero sense. And they were like, oh, who is that person? It's me now, come and beat me. So that is, that could be helpful. Then this one, we often neglect it. Um, I don't know of most other industries, but if you find yourself in financial services, there are tons and tons and tons of regulatory courses you've got to do. Uh, it could be um, information security, it could be It could be health and safety, it could be, you name it. So you don't want to, to have to be chased by your manager. So you want to get on top of it quickly. And of course, um, if you're lucky, you have those documents, um, get on them, review them, ask questions, you know, it will give you tons and tons of information already. And back to my first time of reference. And those are just some artifacts. And that's me, really. That's a question for you, Seth. Can you hear me, Mr. Yinka? Yes. Uh, you, that's a question for you in the chat. It says it's from Ade T. As a new VA, how do you bring yourself to speed with the environment and data infrastructure without getting confused? You get confused. I still get confused, but you just pretend you are not confused. And you put in the shift. This is what I do personally. Um, first two weeks is intense, you know. Um, you burn the midnight oil if you need to. You just go beyond and above, above and beyond the nine to five, you know, because I work from home, um, I only go to the office maybe once every other week. In those first two weeks, seven in the morning, I'm already on my laptop and I'm there till late. So I can't think of any other way um, other than putting in some extra effort because depending on your environment, it could be simple or incredibly complicated, incredibly. Especially those big establishments that have been around for years and, you know, I once worked for a startup, but when I joined, they, there, was, there was no single line of code anywhere. It was all clean and it was built ground up. I was there for about a year and, you know, every, the architecture could all fit into one screen. Not too complex, but it grows, it gets more complicated over time. So, um, the older, the bigger the company, 
there's a good chance they will have fairly not to talk about all the third parties, depending on the kind of offerings they provide anyway, all the third parties they are integrating with. And it's not like you have to know everything. It comes with time. And if your job doesn't touch on, maybe not. Okay. Um, someone um, here, Frances, has a question here. Um, she says, what, sorry, give me a second, let me just go to the chat. Um, her question is, what is the most popular system that most companies use that you would recommend to um, familiarize oneself with? Most popular system? I don't even get that question. But I think I understand where she's coming from. Now, um, I wish I had, let me try and sketch something. I wish I had my stylus here. So. Oh, um, she says CRMs, Genius, it is. Yeah, 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 I get, I get where she's coming from. So most companies have some, some website, www.something. And um, So most companies will deal with customers, okay? And that being the case, there will be some CRM. And of course, to access this might be true I will throw some I will throw a cloud and there could be databases and there could be some Some mid, sorry, I'm not a solutions architect, but I hope you get the gist. So maybe some API layer. There are fetches. You know, your, your application server or something. So your, your customer comes here and you, Depending on the nature of your your job, I mean your your business actually. Um, so let's say um, a banking, a classic banking environment. Uh, their customers could be in a CRM, and you could have applications that store the customer banking records and transactions 
So this might be talking to that one. And so on and so forth. It could be a number of things. So what kind of system? That's the, that's the, that's the question. There's a good chance there will be a CRM somewhere. There's a very good chance um, because you're dealing with customers. You need to onboard them from lead generation to making them into accounts and contacts. So account, object and all that, that CRM stuff. So there will be a CRM somewhere. And if there's a CRM is either is a Dynamics or a Salesforce. Salesforce being the leading. Um, if there's a cloud somewhere, which is very likely, it will be Azure or AWS. Now, all of these applications could be anything, really. So where I worked in the past, um, there's Genio. Genio is just for claims, you know, to create claims, to manage claims. There's Scheme. Scheme is where we create the policies. And there's a WebSphere something where the pricing engine. Now you, you really can't tell what, because there are a million of these kind of systems out there. Somewhere else it could be kangaroo, somewhere else it could be whatever, bicycle, depending on the business or the offerings they bring to the market, the customers they serve and the use cases. But structurally, all of those is connected by APIs, somewhere host, those applications are hosted in the cloud and there's a CRM. So the safe bet from my point of view is if I'm going down that route, if I have an understanding of CRM and cloud, and APIs because APIs string everything together. I think I'm halfway there. And if I now get in and you say you are using Genio, okay. Somebody says using Kangaroo, okay, whatever it is. So it's a safe bet to know or to be familiar with cloud computing CRM. Those two, and an understanding of API. I mean, let me give an analogy. If you can drive, you can drive, right? It could be a Mercedes Benz today, it could be an Audi tomorrow, it could be Opel, it could be Toyota. You don't so much give a damn, but the principle of driving remains the same. Well, the only exception being that if you got an automatic license and somebody now asks you to drive a manual, that might be tricky. But driving is, you, you care less about the, the model because you can drive. So all of this can be different. But the things that hang all these things together, they fundamentally the same. The understanding of HTTP, the understanding of RESTful APIs, the understanding of cloud. I mean, you might want to go down the route of being very knowledgeable in cloud computing, or you might want to, but if you, you can know enough to, to get by. It was an S3 bucket, it was a EMC. Um, 
and so on and so forth. Then, okay, one more thing. If you also have um, maybe a fair knowledge of relational databases, that's, that's everything, really. What's your okay. table? What are your attributes? Well, you know. So because data is becoming very mainstream now, you know, you, you need that fundamental knowledge. What's a table? What's a view? What are attributes? I think we're going beyond the scope of this now, but it's okay if it's useful. Does that help? Yep, Francis, I uh, hope he was able to answer your question. You can just type yes or no in the chat. Okay, she said yes, thank you. Um, also, someone in the chat requested for um, number six of the slides. I'm guessing that's Timmy. Timmy requested for number six. Requested? Yeah, like number six slides. I think she, the person wants you to show the slides or explain it again. This one, reveal as many existing, is it this one? Yes. Yeah, so you might be lucky, you get on a project and they are, you find extensive documentation of some of this. That's a treasure trove right there in front of you. You know, it just answers all the questions, the who, the what, the why, the when, the how, you know? So you have it, then you can build on it. And if you have any following on question, you can ask, oh, I noticed so-and-so here. Has this been resolved or as the case may be? Conversely, it may be very scanty, or it may not even exist. That's the worst case scenario. Then what happens? You would have to go find the answers. Okay, um, are we done with the slide? Because we still have more questions. Yeah, I mean, it's up to the person that asked if they're satisfied. Temi, if you're still in the Zoom, just type yes or no if your question was answered or the explanation. Okay, uh, I don't know. We'll oh, Tim, I guess. Yes, we'll just move on to the next question. Um, this question is from Martins. Um, could you kindly enlighten me about the similarities or differences between a Scrum Master and an Agile Delivery Manager? And with what, and and with what your current role is, and would you say there could possibly be hybrid Scrum Master slash business analyst roles? Those are two questions. Number one is the difference between delivery manager and Scrum Master, right? Yes, that's good, yeah. Okay, so uh, there's a, life is evolving. Um, and so is technology, so as other things. Now, let's establish something. There's no such thing as delivery manager in the Scrum Guide. It's a man-made, okay, out of convenience. Now, delivery managers are becoming very high profile on projects and programs now. And the, the primary remit is to, okay, let me go back to this slide. Imagine your, 
the like traffic controllers or a conductor of an orchestra. Okay, so take for instance, this is a roadmap. Uh, this could be a, a work stream and a scrum squad could be responsible for um, This is my best explanation. So that could be a so that could be a, a squad or a team or a scrum squad with a BA tech blah 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 and a scrum master. So that's squad one. This could be squad two. That could be squad. Oops. Oh man, what's going on? Okay, and so on and so forth. So each of these squads are fully fleshed, formed scrum squad with scrum masters and the rest of the BAs. Now, but all of these guys have to work together to ensuring that like a, an air traffic controller who guides all the planes flying so that they are not clashing the air, that's one. And they are not all trying to land simultaneously. Okay, even though each plane, okay, that, I think that's the best analogy. So if you consider each of these lanes as a plane, okay, each of the planes would have a pilot and a co-pilot. You can say the pilot is a scrum master, but then they need to coordinate with the air traffic controller to know their positioning and to know when to land, to know the runway to land on, to know the timing of landing and to know otherwise, oh, you can't land now because jet2.com is landing. So the delivery manager, in my experience, is a coordinator of the orchestra. He oversees all of this so that nobody is clashing with somebody and so that dependencies are properly managed as well. Okay, so if you're making, if you're making a three course meal, they want to be sure that the starter is starting first and landing first, followed by the means followed by whatever follows it. So now that has been my experience. Um, of course, there could be variations as well. Um, yeah, but I think it's safe to say that this, the delivery manager is almost slowly, gradually eating up the scrum master position. So, so in some organizations, the Scrum Master is almost being subsumed by the delivery manager role. And the delivery managers are getting really, really more critical. They're very high senior stakeholders. They have very high visibilities. They might be in meetings on tables where a Scrum Master might not be on. I hope that makes sense. Uh, the second, what's the second, second question? question? Um, the second question was, sorry, just going back. It was, uh, with your current role, would you say there could possibly be hybrid scrum master slash um, a business analyst roles? Yeah. Again, the end justifies the means. 
all of those appellations mean nothing really if you break it down. Okay, think about it this way. Something needs to be done for somebody in order to achieve certain outcomes. Okay, and that's what matters the most to the customer and the business. All this BA, this, this, da, da, da. It's just for convenience of, you know, creating lines of duties and responsibilities and roles. Um, and I'm seeing it and I'm seeing more of it happening. And it's a disruption to the traditional stonewall roles. Now in Shell, a classic product owner, the job title is product manager. Now the people they refer to as, uh, well, the downstream anyway, that's the much I know. I don't know what goes on in the upstream. The folks they refer to as product owners are actually very senior SMEs. But when it comes to the squad, they call them. So I was, I was, I was like, oh, so they call them product managers, which are traditional product owners. Now, so what am I saying? Um, appellations and nomenclatures are becoming less and less consequential in the grand scheme of things. Business just want things done. Okay, so call yourself a BA, call you. We want things done, we need requirements, we need it to be built, we need it to be coordinated. Okay. So some companies would merge, some will still maintain, I think it's a matter of choice and convenience and, you know, and some are feeling, oh, why do we need a scum as a PO and a BA? I don't think we need, let's experiment, okay? Can the scrum mastering role be shared with the, by the PO and the BA? Or do we even need a BA? A product money, a, and again, if you look at the scrum guide, there's no such thing as BA. BA is not in Scrum Guide. You have a product owner who does the job of what we know as a BA's job. You know. Move on to the next question. Yep. Okay. Um, this question is from Jimmy Adetayo. Is a project manager well positioned to take up the BA roles? Project manager. Yeah. That's the worst case scenario. Um, a product manager, yes. A project manager, maybe not. But again, never say never. What have we not seen? Um, if they can get the job done with minimum hazards, why not? But is a misfit. A project manager can still fit in more into Scrum mastering. A product manager is more aligned to business analysis. Yeah, that's the short answer. Okay, um, Jeannie, I hope she was able to answer your question. If it was, just type in yes, if you're still in the meeting. Is Jimmy still here? Okay, he said yes. Okay. Um, so moving on to the next question here. Um, um, the next question here says, what's the best 
flow process when engaging stakeholders in brackets SMEs for the purpose of requirement um, elicitation. The best would be the one that will answer the questions you have. Um, I think for me, my rule of thumb is validating is a lot easier than going with a blank piece of paper. This is what I mean. So if I said, uh, Mr. Product Owner or whoever, or Mr. or Mrs. or Miss Semi, I think what they don't like is you coming blank added because there's a good chance that maybe what you're asking them and maybe not maybe that's not the case all of the time but there's a good chance that the information you are after them for they would have given it somehow sometime in the past in some way shape or form so the onus is on you to find out you you'll get a lot it will be a, a lot more productive outcome if you did that so if you went and said um hey mr so and so uh this is what i found do 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 you have half an hour for us to just review and validate i just want to be sure my understanding is right you might get more response with that than Then I hear you want to build a duplex. Come on, just me. Yeah, you see, this is blank. This is, it might be sketchy, but it's something to start with. Oh, no, 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 no. The arrow shouldn't be pointing here. It should be pointing there. Okay, okay. Thank you, I get you. I recall there was one stakeholder that I dealt with um, at UBS years ago. It was the chief security officer. So he had requested for a report which had not been produced up until I got there. And the, you know, the, the requirement was sketchy. You couldn't make sense of it. And it was not forthcoming. So I, 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 I made a mistake of, I chatted him up and I said, oh, I needed this time to, actually I wrote him a mail to have a better understanding of, man, he came back smoking. He lashed at me and he said, if I didn't know what I was doing, they should ask somebody else to, to do the job that I was sick and tired of repeating himself. So I went back, then dug all up, dug up all I could lay my hands on, made certain assumptions, drew something and placed it in front of him and said, Eskisa, is this what you want? Okay, this is what I think you want. Is it it or is it it not? And he said, oh, okay, yeah, I'm close, but I don't want this one. And instead of this, um, make it look like that. I like orange. Okay, this is what I want. Oh, good, fantastic. So always go with something as a starting point to engage. If you go with a blank page, yeah, anything could just knock on your confidence and it might not be as productive. Now, the question is, what if there was nothing? And that may very well be the case. That's a different thing. But that will be 
one in 100 times that there will be completely nothing for you to, to start off with. As a, are we are we good? As a newbie, how do you bring yourself to speak? Oh, okay, well, I think we've answered that. That's another okay. question. Okay, so we're moving on. We're done with the other question. Okay. Okay. Um, next question. Sorry, there's just a lot of questions here. Um, before I move on, Olati Bonsu, was he able to answer your question before we move on? Um, I might not hundred percent be able to, but whatever I say is my is my best shot. Okay, okay then. Uh, move on to the next question. This question is from Kenny. Um, work breakdown breakdown structure is it the same as roadmap? No. No. Okay. No, not not necessarily. No. Um. Let me see if I can give an example. So imagine uh, um, hmm. um So this is the end state, right? This is the end state, a, a two bedroom flat. Now, a work breakdown structure could be, I think it's much more lower level. Say for instance, that how do I want to, tackle the building of this and the building of this. A roadmap is saying by let's use this. So you can see dates by this. I want this landed by this. I want this achieved now between this and this. That piece of deliverable will have several iterations or many iterations. So, so in effect, to achieve a milestone, there are smaller bits of activities that need to happen. I think that's where work breakdown structure comes into play. I think it's a finer detailed level of activities that happen to accomplish certain outcomes or outputs that would culminate into a milestone on your roadmap. That's my best guess. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Inka. Um, you put quite a lot of questions here, but I am quite aware of uh, the time constraint. Um, we're scheduled to finish at 8 p.m. and it's currently 7.46. So we will not be able to ask all, all questions because of that, except, um, if you're up for it, Mr. Yen, get some brief through the questions. So if, you, if we draw a line on the questions and okay. and we don't take any more, then okay. we can we can treat the ones already because I'm also famished. I'm so sorry. All right, so we're, okay. trying, 
Okay, we try um wrap this up as quick as possible. Ola to bosun aki so aki lo so to. Sorry about that. It says um at can you touch a bit on customer journey map? Have you got a template you could share? Again, that that word customer journey map could mean a million things. Um, but I think basically the journey map is some would say empathy map or so if a customer what a customer goes through, the touch points he goes through or she goes through in fulfilling certain outcomes and how i do have one but i don't have it on me um and i might have to just anonymize a lot of things on the so in effect long story short customer journey map is strictly my own definition and experience is what a customer goes through the touch points in fulfilling certain outcomes. So why we need it is to analyze what the experience of the customer is. Say for instance, I need to know the balance of my account. And one, I need to go find the number. Okay, maybe that's simple. Then I dial the number. Now, whilst I'm dialing, the automated receiver handles it, and I'm there for 30 minutes before I get put through. That is not a good experience. So I think the customer journey map will highlight all of those touch points and your emotion at each of those touch points. So it would highlight where the frictions are, the frustrations are, the delight are, with a view of, you know, improving the journey. I've got a sample. Um, I think you should reach out to the coordinator. I, I think I'll liaise with them and okay. see how, how quickly I can. Okay, thank you for that. Next one is, what's the best next, next step after being handed over a high-level requirement document for a project? The next step? Yes. Okay, if you, if you it could be anything. Uh, but again, if you, I always think in essence, okay? If you think about it, um, Whatever high level requirement there is needs to be ideally visit tech technology project needs to be translated into a working software, right? So that's the end goal. A classic example. As a as a customer, I want to be able to upload a document during the onboarding process so that my address can be verified. And that's a high level. Now, that would need to be translated into code. And at that level, you could tell it's, it's massive. Where does it, there are so many questions. What kind of document? Okay, what format? How big? You can see that the high level requirement does not address all of those. But if you if you chuck that to a developer, those are the questions you will ask back. So that just tells you the natural sequence would be, I have a million questions with this and I better be finding answers to it. Which naturally makes it 
translate into smaller functional requirements. So what format of file are we talking about? Is it PDF, is it Word, is it PIG, is it JPEG? Okay, how big? 50 KB, one megabyte, okay. Um, how far back in time? Should we allow just anything uh, not older than three months? Okay, um, what else? Then that brings up another set of questions. Okay, where are we storing it? Who would have access to it? You can see almost seven smaller requirements coming off that big. So that's the natural sequence. You look at the requirement and you begin to think what other questions or what other issues needs to be addressed. Okay, as a customer, I want to be able to submit my selfie so that I can get an account open. Good, simple, straightforward, right? Okay, but that's straightforward, but there are so many questions. Like, how many times can I try? How many retries? Okay, how should, should it just be my face or should it? Should it be colored or black and white? And so on. And so with those questions, you know the next steps. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just before I go on, because I see Shevin's hand raised up. Yeah, go on. Uh, you, I'm just waiting on you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Can you hear me? Can yeah. Can you hear me now? Awesome. So yeah. I have put a link on there. Please, on the chat box. Please, uh, this is to everyone. Please don't forget to follow Lada back down on LinkedIn for updates of future workshops and subscribe to us on YouTube to be notified when we have uploaded workshop videos. And if you'd like to, like to help your fellow humans to excel in their career or are seeking to excel in yours, remember to ask for the details for Ladder Back Down for the WhatsApp community. So this is the links I have for the WhatsApp community I have placed in the chat box. Um, I think we have time for just one more person before we go off. A Shagun's hand is up. Um, I've requested that he unmute. Shagun, can you unmute yourself? I, I don't think he can. Can you unmute yourself? Okay. Um, I've asked him to unmute and I've also, I've, and there's, if you can unmute yourself, please do. If not, um, there's me, you are Essen also. Yeah, do you want me to go ahead? Is that Shagun? No, me, you are. Me, you are. Yes, please go ahead, please. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hi, Mr. Yinka. So Hello. my question, I think, the, uh, I don't think she read my question now. Um, if you, if you to say you are willing to mentor someone, What's your process? I'm willing. Yeah, I have to use the word willing because obviously you okay. might have a lot of doing. So when, uh, I once, uh, uh, when I used to mentor, oh, yeah. um, it was straightforward. Just bring yourself. And I would usually recommend you read uh, business analysis by Deborah, uh, whatever, 
that book. Um, who, who knows the book I'm talking? Deborah something, business analysis. Um, it's a very common published by BCS. So I'll just ensure you have that as a companion and I'll, I'll be on your case for you to read it through. And uh, it would normally just take about four weekends. I'll take you through a project. I'll show you artifacts. I'll give you a project to submit a review. I know that, that was what I used to do then. Okay. Thank you very much. As well. Um, I'm sorry we won't be able to take on any more questions. There's quite a few. Maybe, maybe one more. Okay, one more. Thank you very much, Mr. Inka. Sorry about that. Um, there's one here. It says, when writing a user story and acceptance criteria, do you do we need to use persona for the acceptance criteria, e.g.? No, because if the persona would already have been stated in the user story. Yeah, that's simple as that. So as a, as Mary, or as whatever the persona is, I need to be able to do so and so, so that so and so can happen then you don't repeat that in the acceptance criteria. You don't repeat Mary because the acceptance criteria, the, the story confers ownership on the acceptance criteria. Because indeed, the acceptance criteria could be different for a different persona doing the same thing. So the, the acceptance criteria is fulfills the need and the reason why that need is needed by the persona. So you don't need to, it will be verbose if you, if you have to state, given the married, you know, that would be absurd. So you don't okay. need to. That's your apologies if I have anything. Okay. Anyone, any, any more? Yes, um, I think there's quite a few ones that have come up, but the same thing, it means, it's basically about the slides. Um, the accident It's recorded, isn't it? Yes, it is recorded, but they were just asking if it's possible to have the slides. I believe they're your property, so. I, um, I, what I'll do, I just an, anonymize certain things and because for instance, things like this, um, you can see names there and all that. Although it's already recorded. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I can share it, no problem. Oh, thank you very much. Um, once we get the, once we get the slides, we'll we'll send it out to everyone. Okay, thank you. Um, it the time right now is one minute past eight. Would like to say a big thank you to Mr. Ibiinka Aino. Thank you so much for today. It's been very insightful, very. Well, it's opened my eyes to so many things, and I'm sure others also. And the quite well, the quite a lot of people who really they're happy about this and the same. Thank you. It's been a great session, and thank you all for joining the session. Much appreciated. Um, links on how to join ladder back down uh, WhatsApp group. It's I put it up, but just in case you haven't seen it. I'm putting up again. Please join it. It's quite, it, it's, it's a really 
good place. You have most of things like you've been asking, like questions, templates, and stuff. Um, you quite you find it there. There are quite a lot of people who have lots of experience, lots of mentors on there, who will be more than happy to help out and answer questions and so. Well, yeah, to help out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Yinka, for the information you provided today. It was a it pleasure. Was yeah. So everyone have a great day. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Whilst we're trying to get in. Thanks so much, Esther and Abimbola. Sorry, I mean, we were trying to log into another meeting that we had at eight o'clock, but we haven't been able to log into that. I hope like you it. can still hear me. Thanks so yeah, much for your, you. just, you know, for your hosting. <laughs> that was remarkable. Thank you also, Ms. Yinkao, also for, if you're still here, for that presentation, really smooth and really yeah. quiet, um, delivered really calmly as well. So thank you so much. I'll um, stop the recording and then I'll make sure that this is um, processed and the link is sent out to all delegates at some point. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. And if you're not in the Ladder Back Down WhatsApp group, please remember to access it before um, we close off this meeting because the links won't be available to you after that. Thank you.